Okay, 10 things you need to know about trail running coming up. Number one, watch your footing. Far more important than when you're running on the road or when you're running on the track is to watch your footing very carefully. When you're running on technical trail, when you're running downhill particularly like this and you've got loose stones and rock or branches, roots, you need to be careful where you place your foot so you don't turn your ankle, so you don't fall and get badly injured or hurt. Number two. You'll often hear it said about trail running that you should run the flat and the downhill sections and walk the uphill sections. But that's not necessarily how it has to be. Sometimes the downhills, like that one back there, are too steep to run down. And sometimes it does you good to try and run the uphills. Number three, when trail running, never let an opportunity pass you by. And when you see a beautiful place, enjoy it to its fullest. This is Lulworth Cove and Lulworth Cove is one of the most beautiful spots on the southwest coast path and the water is still freezing cold but when you've just run 14k it's fine. Number four, be prepared. You never know what the trails are gonna throw at you. You never know exactly what the weather conditions are gonna be like. So try and prepare as much as you can in terms of your clothing, your footwear, the gear you wanna take with you. Obviously, are you gonna be running at night? Do you need a flash light, a head torch? Are you gonna be running in muddy conditions? Do you need trail shoes with deep lugs? Or is it going to be dry so you could almost get away with wearing your road shoes? Do you need to carry water? Do you need a backpack? Is there anything else you need to carry? A map? Compass? Are you wearing clothing that will keep you either warm or cool? Do you have a spare layer that you need to take? Will you need to take a waterproof jacket? Have you got enough nutrition to last you the run? Have you got adequate hydration, water, or some other drink that you either carry with you or have you got money that you need to take with you to buy something en route? Make sure you're prepared when you go out on the trails. <sighs> Number five, you used to hear a lot about something called the country code. And it's basically respect for the environment. So when you're running on the trails in the countryside, don't drop litter. Please close gates behind you. Don't frighten or harass the animals, the wildlife. And basically look after the place that you're running so others can enjoy it after you've been there. It's quite simple. It's not hard, but sometimes, all too often, you see discarded gel wrappers on the floor. I've seen some today. So it's just a case of being aware of where you're running, noting that it's beautiful, it's free, it's open. So you don't want to annoy farmers who might restrict your access to land 
or destroy the land so it can't be used. So, number five, take care of your environment. Number six, navigation. Now, it may be true that a lot of the fun of trail running is exploring new places and finding routes you didn't know before. But uh, a lot of the time, it's very sensible to have a route planned out beforehand or a map or a watch with the GPS route on it. Depending on where you're going, depending on how dangerous the route is, you want to know that you're safe, you want to know that you're going to get where you want to go. You want to know that you're not going to be left stranded either in the dark or somewhere where the tide has come in and you can't get past. So please be aware when you go out on the trails, try and make sure you've got a route planned and that somebody knows where you are and where you're going. Number seven, downhill running. Relax. You will bust your quads up if you tense up when you're running downhill. As much as you can, relax your shoulders, relax your leg muscles, and let gravity bring you down. It's very easy to tense up, especially when it gets quite steep. And if you don't want to go fast, then maybe take shorter strides. But if you're going to go at a bit of a pace, then just relax, take longer strides, bounce down the hill and let gravity take you. Keep watching out in front of you and down the steps, bounce down the steps, putting your toes towards the edge of the step so as not to trip on the lip of the step. Number eight, let's talk about nutrition and hydration. Often discussed, much controversy surrounding it. If you're looking to run long distances, you might want to look into running some of your training runs on empty. You don't need to take lots of food with you. Don't take any food with you, especially if it's not a long run. You know, anything around 10 to 20 kilometers you, may, you don't need any food at all. I often just go out with just a cup of coffee inside me. No breakfast. And what I think is that that teaches your body to burn fat more efficiently, which means you need to use fewer gels or sugary drinks in order to give yourself energy to run. It may not work for you, but a lot of the gastric problems in ultra running, in long distance running, are caused by too much sugar intake, overload of coke or gels. Hi guys. Morning. And I think if you can cut down on that, then all the better. And with hydration, a lot of people think, you know, you've got to keep drinking all the time. Well, you don't have to keep drinking all the time. Drink if you're thirsty, but it's perfectly okay to finish a long run a bit dehydrated. As long as you hydrate yourself well afterwards. And there's no evidence to suggest, as far as I'm aware, that running slightly dehydrated affects your performance. So drink to thirst. Don't listen to somebody who tells you to drink so many mils per half hour or whatever. Just drink when you're thirsty. And I'm coming up to a tap right now, which is very fortunate. Number nine. Even the most stunning, beautiful, 
routes can become mundane and tedious at times. So when you're running on the trails, I guess this applies to any running as well really. Explore new routes, you know, go to different places, find new adventures, find new trails, find interesting places, enter races that you never thought you'd enter, in places you never thought you'd go. Explore, broaden your horizons. You'll be a richer person for it. You'll have a richer, fuller running experience. And you get to see some places you never imagined you'd see. Number 10, trail running should be a mix of hard work and enjoyment and both of those should be maxed out. So maximum effort, whether it's the distance you cover, the time you are on your feet, how high you get your heart rate or your average pace per minute. That should be your hard effort and you should enjoy yourself as much as possible. So look around you, look at the scenery, enjoy it. Enjoy the weather, whether it's raining, whether it's sun shining. Hi there. Don't be a grump. Say hello to people, smile. Above all, have fun on your trail run. Be grateful for the places you get to run and be happy because that's what it's all about. And there we are. We're at the end of 29 kilometers, about 19 miles of trail running on some of Britain's best coastal path.